Hello and welcome to NCC Tech TV. I'm your host, Tanisha Wood, and today we have a great episode for you. Our first story will include Chi, our guest reporter, who will be examining the recycling at Nicholson Catholic College and who will be interviewing two staff members at Nicholson about the recycling. Next, we will head Thank over to you. Sarah, who will be interviewing Abby and Maddie, the owners of Lambert Decorating. Now it's time for some recycling. Over to you, Chi. Hi, I'm Chi. I'm recycling. Do you? Now, let's see how Nicholson do it. Hi, Miss Lynch. So, what is going on around here right now? We have the recycling depot open today, yeah. and so we're taking together the recycling from across the school. Yeah. Um, we're having some difficulties today because people aren't properly sorting within their classrooms um, or within the hallway bins. Okay, so this is this is like a recycling with plastic and things around it. So around the school, we sort our plastics and our paper separate. Yeah. We also sort our can containers or tin cans into another bin. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, people aren't rinsing those things out or putting them in the proper containers, okay. um, which is why we're having such a mess here today. Hi, my name is Chi and today I'm with Mr. Wood. Hi, Chi. Uh, and uh, we're going to ask him about some question about recycling. So the first question is about what is being recycling being poorly? Yeah, it's actually a really good question. We just finished our recycling here not that long ago. Um, I think people always want to do what's best, and they're really trying to recycle. But there are some big issues with what is being recycled. Mm -hmm. Biggest problems we saw here and we continually see is what we call contamination. Mm -hmm. So things like food being put in the recycle bin. We had apples, we had yogurt containers that weren't empty. Those things cannot be recycled or recycled properly. We had a pencil crayon in there. We had things like paper towel. None of that stuff is recyclable. I think people might just realize or not realize that those aren't recyclable. They're trying to do the right thing, but it does create issues for us. Uh, we had juice containers that had juice in them. We had milk containers that had milk left in them, which after a week is really nasty for recyclers. Yeah, I seem so. So, so how can, like, we can improve that, like, can't, like, say to them, like, give them a lesson or something? Yeah, yeah, and certainly I think uh, lessons is one thing. One of the things that we try to do here at the school is have um, classes volunteer to do the recycling. So the idea there is every student will have a chance to experience recycling. So yeah. if they see the juice container that's been in there for a week, if they have to pick out that rotten apple core, um, we can have a conversation then about why that isn't appropriate. And hopefully the message gets out there that you can't recycle an apple core. You can compost them, we just can't. Yeah, um, but obviously it will take time. Uh, and I think obviously the if you look at what the three R's are, reduce, reuse, recycle, what we're doing here should be the last step in everything. Mm -hmm. And it is an educational process. So for sure, it will take time, but I think the more times people see the nasties <laughs> in recycling, the hopefully the less likely they will be to do it in the future. Thanks for the great story, Chi. Now let's head over to Sarah, who will be interviewing Abby and Maddie. Hi, it's Sarah Parody. You're back at NCC Tech TV. We're gonna be interviewing Maddie and Abby, the owners of Lambert Decorating, and we're gonna ask them a few questions today. So Abby and Maddie, what made you get into uh, decorating and painting? Because usually it's a male dominant profession. Um, well, my dad had a uh, painting business uh, when I was growing up, so I started working for him. Um, and then uh, things slowed down for him. He did the uh, insurance restoration painting. Um, that he also owns another business that's insurance restoration, so it was painting for him. And when work slowed down there, I kind of went off on my own and took on a few side jobs here and there and I kind of dragged Maddie into it with me and from there it, things really kind of took off and yeah. we've been very busy ever since. So what made you decide to make this an all-female company? 
I mean, we're both female, so starting it was um, obviously female owned and operated to begin with, and then we hired our first employee who was female, and we, um, we started to realize with some of the clients we were getting, they were more comfortable having women come in their house and work. They, you know, were really excited to see, you know, women in the trades popping up. Yeah. So that for us has kind of been a, an exciting thing that we've been able to kind of offer that service yeah. to people men and women alike like it's yeah. it's something that's needed i think yeah what areas do you cover in terms of like painting is there like cabinetry interior exterior or we do a lot of cabinets um that's yeah. quickly becoming like our number one thing we, yeah. we do because yeah. not a lot of people do it in the area um we do it's everything, everything really yeah all, yeah. all interior work um yeah. most exterior we're trying to narrow down what we do with exteriors just because some of it, it's either, you know, the heights. Um, that, yeah. I'm not a fan of heights, and yeah. neither is she. So yeah. <laughs> for being painters, that's not a great yeah. thing. But, you know, inside is different than yeah. outside heights. Yeah. And uh, it, an exterior job is a whole different ballgame than an interior job. So we're becoming more selective on the exterior jobs we take. How do you and Abby uh, split the roles and responsibilities of running your business? Um, I do a lot of like the office work, all of the yeah. bookkeeping and that stuff because that's not really your thing. So a lot of days I'm home and working on the paperwork aspect of it the math part yes <laughs> yeah I go out and do do the quotes I'm usually yeah meeting. you're more sociable and I am better <laughs> working better at home. on the computer <laughs> <laughs> yeah we started you know doing it all together um you know we work side by side yeah. seven days a week and <laughs> Once we hired our other girl, we found that we were able to split the tasks up, which was better for us as well because we weren't yeah. together 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I I like the hands-on stuff. I like going out and meeting people and doing the actual work. And Maddie has got the attention span to sit down and, you know, yeah. crunch the numbers and yeah. tell me when I'm spending too much. <laughs> <laughs> Is the job, like, really physically demanding yeah, it's uh, it depends on what the job is. Um, cabinet jobs, not super physically demanding. You know, right. we take the doors off, we reinstall them. That's about as physically demanding as it gets. Interiors, um, if you're doing ceilings that are vaulted, like, you know, that's that's a lot on your back, on your neck. Yeah. Um, you know, your arms hurt for days. Mm -hmm. uh, doing you know baseboards and doors and stuff like that. Yeah. That's pretty easy. You're not going to, mm -hmm. you know, hurt at all after yeah. that. Exteriors, again, they're a whole different ball game. Like there was, I wear my Fitbit when I'm working and there was once, <laughs> one job last summer where I had 308 minutes of exercise <laughs> and burnt over 3,000 calories in oh less than eight hours because of lugging ladders around. It's the jobs yeah. where, you, you know, there's the heights that you're mm -hmm. lugging ladders around or you're yeah. rolling ceilings or walls even that are, 16 to 20 feet high so wow. those are the physically exhausting jobs so do you guys plan to uh grow your business outside of what it is right now yeah i definitely think um you know i mean we haven't really sat down and figured out a five-year plan but yeah, we would yeah. like to definitely hire on uh, yeah. more employees and you know be able to split people up into teams so we can hit more jobs at one time and mm -hmm. yeah. you know we seem to be growing fairly quickly like we started with just you and then I quit my day job and then we hired a girl so we seem to be yeah pretty on track hopefully we'll hire someone else within the next year yeah. or so yeah we're just hitting going into our second year right now so you know each year we see more growth and we hope to soon get to a point where we can definitely hire on at least two more people in the next year. What brand of paint do you, you usually use or one that you prefer most often? Benjamin Moore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we stick, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say... Almost exclusively. exclusively. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say 98%, but I don't even know if it's that. I think we're pretty much 100% Benjamin Moore. Um, it's it's all about the quality. Yeah. It's a, It does, you know, it, it is a little more pricey than the other lines of paint, yeah. but if you pay... Yeah, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. It's, yeah definitely the case with Benjamin Moore. Uh, being a construction based business, what kind of hours do you usually put in? It varies job to job, week to week, but like mm -hmm. in the last even like two weeks, like it was 
uh, and we're doing at least 44 hours on site. Moving on to more of like the fun questions. Uh, what's the smallest thing you've ever painted? I did a little like nightstand. I've had to paint like really tiny trim before. What's the largest thing you've ever painted? I think the largest thing in my mind was that we did like a massive staircase. Yeah, staircase. And it was, it was big, but like it was just so many coats and so many like little details so that to me yeah. was like the biggest yeah, thing yeah that sticks did. out in my mind as the biggest thing too yeah. like it's nothing like a whole painting going and painting a whole house is like yeah your typical thing but that yeah. one was mentally draining the staircase but it was yeah. so rewarding yeah it was, it was definitely, really it turned out really cool yeah but probably one of my favorite projects we've ever done has social media helped grow your brand at all Social media was key. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't think we would be here without Instagram, <laughs> actually. That was where we got the majority of our business for the first almost a year, probably, because it's hard to, to get your name out there. Yeah. So it's a good opportunity to like show our work and, and have like a brand that people kind of click with, and then that makes them... Yeah contact yeah us. it's like a constantly updated portfolio mm -hmm. and it lets you be more personal with your yeah you yeah know, possible clients as well yeah. so like yeah. it gets that like you're inviting someone into your home you kind of it's nice to kind of have a sense of who they are yeah um but and yeah then you can also connect with like other painters yeah. in the area yeah. and stuff too it's mm -hmm. nice that kind of little community yeah mm -hmm. we've been able to connect with a lot of other female painters in yeah. you know canada or the states and stuff oh, like that and there's yeah. a lot of you know common threads yeah. between us but mm -hmm. yeah social media has been huge uh, yeah yeah our, definitely our first uh year of business would not have been possible without yeah you know posting on there and getting recognized mm -hmm. yeah. on mm -hmm. there so yeah. the fact that you have an all-female company do you hope that it inspires others in like the belleville or quinty area to uh, start up their own all-female companies or just businesses in general oh well, i think you know if it can even inspire some girls just to get into the trades mm -hmm, even yeah. like that like that's huge because there's not a lot of women in the trades at all they're you know but all female businesses like I think we have um you know an edge on some of the competition because of things we've already discussed like yeah. some people are more comfortable with having women in their house um not to say that we are female only like we, yeah. we're currently you know all female but yeah. that doesn't mean yeah. we wouldn't yeah, yeah. bring on you know Another, yeah, a, a guy or something yeah. like that um yeah. but yeah uh it'd be really kind of cool to see you know more female owned and operated trades businesses pop up in the area that would be and you know there's a few women in the area who do work in other trades uh carpentry and stuff like that that yeah. we've tried to connect with and yeah. you know so we can give their names out to our clients and yeah so it would be really neat to see that yeah yeah Thank you, Abby and Maddie, for your time today. If you ever need anything painted, make sure to call Abby and Maddie at Lambert Decorating. Back to you, Tanisha. What an amazing story and episode. Thank you, Sarah. This is NCC Tech TV, a show for you.